Hi, Steve here. I'm going to show you how to install a Nortel Norstar 6x16 phone system. This was a small office phone system that was very popular during the 90s, the last decade, and still actually quite a few of them around today. Um, these are probably one of the quickest and simplest Norstar phone systems to install. Now, before you install this, there's something that needs to be removed. And before you remove it, it needs to be unplugged, so make sure it's unplugged. Okay, on the inside is a software cartridge up here at the top that needs to be taken out. And the reason why is because there's a screw hole behind it. Okay, see there's a screw hole right there? And actually, taking off the lid is not a bad idea too. It's just on hinges here on the side. You just lift it and it comes off like that. All right, when you want to mount this thing, there's three screw holes. There's one here where the software cartridge was, one over here next to the uh, Amphenol connector, and then one at the bottom. Okay. What I find is easiest is to hang the screw for the very top first, and then you there's actually enough room inside there that you can actually slide it over the screw and then hang it on top when you place your other two screws. A common rookie mistake when installing these is not to re is to forget to include enough swing room for the door. So, like I'm here in my home office here in the basement, and I've got this gas meter here in the way. When I set out to install this, I had to make sure that when I installed it there would be enough room for the door to open and close okay all right so let me finish installing this and if you want to be a perfectionist the way to really do this would be to put a small level across the top and get it just right but I'm just gonna eyeball it for the speed of for the sake of expedience here I'm gonna put in another screw right in there okay and for the purposes of this video I'll skip the bottom screw just because I I want to keep it moving here. All right, so now that you've done that, you can replace your software cartridge. Again, make sure we are not powered on. You need to be unplugged. Do not go taking this in and out while it's plugged in. It's got to be unplugged. Okay, put in my software cartridge. Okay, you don't have to plug it in yet. It's not really time to plug it in. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is make my connections. Now, there's two things that need to be connected. The first one is the voice lines or the POTS lines that you, you know, the phone service. And those go over here. They're, they're one, two, three, four, five, six. You don't have to use all six, but there's a capacity for one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the other thing is the station cabling. And this is what's known as an Amphenol connector. This is a male connector, so I'll need a female connector which I don't have right this second, so I'm going to stop the video and go find that, and then I'll show you how to do that part. Hey, we're back. So I've got the unit mounted, the KSU mounted. KSU is, is abbreviation for key system unit, which is what these are properly referred to besides phone systems. And so connecting the lines, just to, to summarize again, they're just RJ11s, okay? So, you know, the same little RJ11 that you use to plug into a regular old telephone, those those POTS lines or plain old telephone service lines would just connect to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 over here on the RG11s. Now, this Amphenol connector though is all the station connections and you got a lot of options here. Um, the, the Probably the fastest and quickest way to do it would be to get one of these um, 66 blocks that are pre-wired with a um, Amphenol connector on the side. So here you see, you know, you've got all your pins, and then they're all, it's already been punched down with an Amphenol connector. That's a male connector. Um, also on the uh, the Norstar is is a male connector. You could buy one of these amp cords um, with, you know, pre-terminated amp cords um, with a couple of female connectors. And so you would simply put one into here, and then you would tighten down the Velcro make it snug and then now I've actually I've got one that I cut so I'm using this as a demonstration and then you would take the other end and you would mount your station distribution block somewhere and then you would take again same thing plug it in tighten down the velcro what that would do is when you turn it on all these first 16 pins would then be your 16 stations ready to go I'm going to do it the more traditional way which is where I'm going to take the female end and put it on the North Star because I don't have a choice. And then I'm going to use a uh, bare uh, stripped copper wire for the um, 
for the punch down. So I'm going to manually punch mine down. Now I actually use a special block because this is a lab. I, I have a special block with RJ11s built into the side. It, it's kind of weird, but but this principle is the same. I'm going to punch down the color code, blue, orange, green, brown, slate, etc. here, and then I'll make my cross connects from there to my uh, telephone stations. Now, considerations when doing this. The main consideration you need is to think about how you're going to organize your, your backboard for, for future expansion. A lot of times, the mistake that people make is they mount the equipment kind of just dead center. They never think that they might have to add additional equipment later on. So when you've got your, your backboard and you're laying it out, you want to try to keep everything kind of condensed as much as possible so that over time, as you're adding things, that you're not having to move things around again, especially station wire. You don't want to have to, to you know move your 66 blocks because, because when they get mounted, what happens is, let's say I mount my 66 block here, you know, you're going to bring your wires in from, from you know, wherever, the ceiling or something, and you're going to enter the, 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 the backboard, and you're going to kind of anchor them down, and then you're going to distribute them on the right-hand side of the 66 block and make your cross connections. If something should happen later, you need to move this, it really disrupts a lot. Maybe there's not enough slack. You know, maybe you have to take a bunch of anchors and wire ties off. So if you can get this right the first time, it's great. What I usually do is I usually will have um, a station block. Like with the 616, I don't need to have a second block. And more in larger systems, I'll have usually a distribution block, and then I'll have a station wiring block. But for these, like they're usually just small offices. I'm just going to have one block where I'm going to bring the amphenol from the 616 over to here, and then I'm going to punch my stations down on the right-hand side. And then to cross-connect them, you use something called bridge clips. A little bitty piece of steel right there. It's like it kind of looks like a like a folded over piece of steel. What it does is it slides on top of the pins because a 66 block is usually split. And what that means is that the pins on this side, the, the, the you know this pin and this pin, the first two pins, they're connected to each other. There's a metal connection in the back, but they're independent from these two over here. So what you do is is you know. Like I said, these will be your stations coming from the phone system, and this is where you'll plug, you know, punch down your stations for the for the for going out to your phone wiring. When you want to make the connection, you simply put the bridge clip across the middle two pins, and then that bridges the connection all the way through. That's why I call them bridge clips. This is great when you're trying to troubleshoot things. You can pull the bridge clips off, which eliminates the the house side of the wiring, and you can find out you know what's going on just right here before it goes into the phone system. Okay. So what I'm going to do is pretty much wrap it up there. What I still have to do is mount this. I've got to take and punch down, fan out and punch down my 25 pair on here. And then I'm going to plug it in and I'm going to start doing some programming. We'll cover that in a different video. Okay, thanks for watching.